In this video, I'm going to show you the two main techniques for building responsive layouts in Flutterflow. But let's first get the big picture in mind. Responsive layouts are just learning how to stack things on top of each other, to turn things into columns. Because when you're on a desktop, when you have more horizontal space, you can stack things next to each other. But as the screens get smaller, you don't have as much room, and so those things that were stacked next to each other now have to be stacked on top of each other. That's it. And there are two main ways to do this. First is duplicating widgets. So you have one for desktop where the widgets are stacked next to each other. And then when you get down to tablet or mobile, you hide that and show the one that has them stacked on top of each other. The second way is by using a wrap widget. And this is accomplished by configuring widgets inside the wrap widget so that they know when to change from stacking next to each other to on top of each other. So let's show you how to do each of these. Okay, so here's our first layout. And as you can see, it's not responsive. So if we go down to an iPhone, the layout clearly breaks. So let's go back to desktop and let's take a look at how this is built. So we've got probably the most common layout structure here where we've got one main widget that is a column because everything's just stacked on top of each other and you scroll like on any device. And inside that, we've just got a hero, which is just here for some background styling. And inside there, we've got a row. And this is where our main stuff is, right? We've got a left side and a right side container of this hero section. Just got our copy on the left and our image on the right. Probably the most common hero layout on the web. Okay, so what do we do? Well, remember, the big picture is we're just taking stuff that's next to each other, like these two containers right here, and stacking them on top of each other. And in this first technique, we are duplicating it. So we'll take these two containers, duplicate them, and put them in a column. Okay, great. So let's do that. So we're just taking these main sections right here, these main containers, and stacking them on top of one another. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the great thing is, is that we've already got a column here. So we can just duplicate this and put them in the proper place in this hierarchy. So let's do that. So we can actually just close all this up because we're putting them as children in our main column right here. So we can just grab our hero section and command D duplicate. Awesome, so let's close that up. So now we just have two hero sections. And when we scroll down, we can just see, oh, we've got it again. But we don't want them like this. We want these to span the full width and be stacked on top of each other. Okay, so let's grab these out of here and let's close it up so we can see the hierarchy real easily. Now, first I'm gonna rename these so I just remember which heroes these are. So I'm just gonna say hero, mobile, copy, and same thing here. Great, and the last thing I'm gonna switch out here, I've, I've got this flexible widget on, which we need to turn off when it's in the column. So let's just turn that off for the time being. And then we can just drag these in here. And we wait till they're purple so we can see that they're siblings to whatever is highlighted. And we can get rid of that whole section now, beautiful. Okay, so now we've got that main section up here. And then we've got these stacked ones down here. So that's the first step, set up the structure. The second step is setting the responsive visibility because we only want this to be seen on desktop and anything smaller than desktop, we wanna show these ones, the stacked ones. Okay, so we go up to our main one and why don't we just rename this right here. We'll call it hero desktop and come over to this responsive visibility and twirl it open. And we wanna see this on desktop, which it is, and tablet landscape we can keep it on. And then for everything else, we want it hidden. Okay, great. And then for these, we want the opposite. So we want to see them on tablet and phone, but we wanna hide them on tablet landscape and desktop. And the same thing over here. Beautiful. So now everything should look like it did in the beginning. That's what we want because we are looking at the desktop right now. But if we switch down to say a phone, then we see our other layout. 
Now, the last step you've probably already noticed, and that is that after you've duplicated those sections, you'll need to change all of the styling. Typically, that'll have to do with size, like of type and images, and spacing. So here, we just need to reduce our padding, and let's bring it down to 30, and the same thing for our image here. Beautiful, now we can bring it up, and just like that, we've made our app responsive for all devices. Okay, awesome. Let's check out how we do it the other way. Okay, so we're back to the structure of our page before. And if you remember, this technique doesn't duplicate sections and then show or hide according to the screen size, but it does the moving of widgets from side by side to on top of one another by itself. It recognizes when it needs to do that. Okay, so we're gonna need a widget that can do that, that can change from stacking widgets next to each other to on top of one another. And we have a perfect perfect widget for that. That's the wrap widget. So we're going to have to replace this row with a wrap. And this is easy to do in Flutterflow because you can just right click or two finger click if you're on a mouse pad and come down to replace widget. And we want to replace it with a wrap. Okay, beautiful. That's the first step. All right, well, this isn't right. So how are we gonna figure out these width things? The big picture is that if the screen is some desktop size or bigger, we want each of these containers to fill up 50% of the width. And if it's smaller, we want it to fill up 100% of the width. Because once it's 100% of the screen width, then they'll just have to wrap, stack on top of one another. Okay, so we have to set up this logic. We have to check for this condition. So let's come over to our first container right here. We can close it up and come down to our width here. And we want to bind a property right here. And let's just make this bigger. And we're checking for a condition. So we want a conditional value. And remember what we're doing here is we're saying if the screen is some sort of desktop size, then set it to 50%. And if not, set it to 100%. Okay, so we want to check for the condition in here. And so that's the first option up here. And it's only a single condition. And we want to check for how big the screen is. So let's come in here and under global properties, we've got a screen width property. And we're given the option to check for a certain percentage of the screen width, but we just want the whole screen width, like what is the user seeing? And so we wanna see, is the screen width in desktop? And so you can pick whatever number you want. Let's just use this one right here, 1280. So we're gonna say if it's greater than or equal to 1280, so if it's on a desktop, that's what we're calling that, a specific value, and that would be 1280, beautiful. So if we're on a desktop, then we want the width of this left container to be 50% half of the width. So how do we do that? Well, we've got that global property here. So we can say that, and we don't want it 100%, we want it 50%. And so we actually default to 50%, it's a fraction. So boom, there we go. So if it's not on desktop, if it's smaller, then we want it to be 100%. So we can just come in here and grab that variable and paste it in here and just change it to 100%. Beautiful. So we've got that and nothing happens. And that's because if we have any computed properties right here, any values that need to be calculated, we'll only see those when we run or test our app. But there's a way to see it in the canvas right here. So if you click into here and scroll all the way down, we've got this default variable value. Now, this is going to come out in pixels. So what you need to do is you need to look at what preview you're using. And so right now we're using 1280 by 800. And so in this view, we want our 50%. So you just need to take 50% of your width. So 50% of 1280. And obviously I can do that in my head and it's 640. Beautiful. So that one's done and we just need to apply the same logic to our right side. So let's just come in here and grab that, copy that variable, come in here and paste it in. Wonderful. 
Now, we're almost done. We've got some height issues here. And that's because before, we were handling the height through our row. But here, our wrap doesn't handle the height of its children. So we have to handle that individually. So let's just come in here and give it a height of 500. And let's give this side the same dimensions. Beautiful. All right, so let's test this out and take a look. Beautiful. So here we've got our 50% layout. And if we go down to a tablet smaller, they stack on top of one another. Beautiful. So those are the two main ways to design responsiveness in Flutterflow. We know responsiveness can be tricky, so leave your questions below and we'll answer them. Let us know if you're struggling with anything else, and we'll see you in the next video.